Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. But never mind that. In this video, we're gonna rip apart this junk, and take this junk and this electronical junk, and make a guitar with an integrated spring reverb. This was an idea posed by a viewer, Pablo. If you have any suggestions for a future video, post them in the comments down below. I will show and explain the entire process in detail, including simple, easy to understand diagrams. After that, we'll hook this thing up to a wet dry rig and see how that works. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned. Roll that beautiful brain footage. First thing we'll have to do is put a pickup in the Tessimule guitar. And this one turned out to be a good one because it has two splittable coils. And I had to place it in a way that would give me plenty of room to put the rest of the guts in here. But before I start stabbing junk in here, let me briefly play a clip of a previous video where I explain spring reverb, how it works, and the different ways that you can build one. So the first thing you'll need for this is a reverb tank. It's a metal box with two coils and two springs in it. You can get one of these on eBay for about maybe $20, or if you look up, you can get one out of a broken guitar amplifier. Now, I'm sure you can make one on your own by stretching a spring, maybe for a screen door, and then attaching a speaker cone to each end somehow, although I've never done this. It basically works like the active plate reverb, but just smaller. You're going to hook your sound source to the left input, then hook the left output to the input on the reverb tank, then you're going to hook the output of the reverb tank to the right input. Then from the right output to the receiver through a step down transformer. Here's the unit that I built and housed inside of a briefcase. And this is what it sounds like when used with a guitar amplifier. This is a floppy little spring that come off of some kind of equipment at my wife's work while they were doing a remodel. It's not really long enough, but luckily those kind of weird fate things that happened, I had mentioned to her that I needed a floppy long spring, and she said there were two of them in the floor after the workers left. They both have a hook on one end, so I'm just gonna screw them in here and uh, leave some slack so I can tension them using sheetrock screws. Now we got that, that in there and it makes weird boingy noises when you pluck it, but we need a way to hear that. This is a Motorola horn driver from the back of a small cone-shaped tweeter that are about three and a half or four inches across and you used to find these all the time in bookshelf speakers or those cheap speaker boxes for behind a truck seat. I am a fiend for these things because if you take it off the back of the tweeter and grab this uh, cone here and you just rip it out of there, inside you'll find a made in Mexico Motorola piezo element. And these are like the best ones that I've ever seen. They are so efficient and powerful that you don't even need a preamp. You just clip these little leads in here and take it out. And now you'll have to solder new leads to those two solder points. Now I know I almost always use my big industrial soldering gun and I'm not afraid of overheating this piezo element. When you use these with like 100 watts on them, they get hot as a firecracker. They have this rubber coating on the back that is pretty much heat proof and it will also insulate it from the spring. But I'm using this small regular soldering iron because it has a pointed tip and it's much more precise. Now that that's all soldered up, we can test it. And check it on, man. The Mexican piezo is way better than the Chinese. It's like a so loud. Now we'll grab the guitar and you can see that you can use this to electrify almost any instrument that makes sound by vibrating and sound is vibration. So make acoustic guitar electric, put it on a toy piano, put it on a side of a flute. Put it in a drum, but we're gonna stick it in this spring and see what we get. Real quick before we move forward, there are other places you can get these piezos. You can buy them on eBay, or you can get them out of like uh, talking greeting cards, older toys with beeper sounds, or uh, old wristwatch. <laughs> that needs to be a lot tighter. I 
after tensioning, uh, it started making those good space laser sounds, but it's not really picking up the sound of the guitar when you strum it. It's not very loud, so we need a way to drive that spring. So here, we got the guts to a set of computer speakers. Basically just a little solid state amplifier. And as a driver, we'll use this little mini subwoofer. I don't remember where this came from. It might have been out of some other computer speakers or a toy or small, like a Bluetooth speaker, something like that. I don't know, I'm a hoarder, man. But we can't really use it directly in contact with the spring or it'll rattle against it and it will sound awful. <laughs> So, hoarding to the rescue once again. This little piece of like foam mat that's a little round thing with a plus sign on it. I also don't know where this come from. It was probably in some type of packaging and it looked useful to me so I kept it. We just take a dot of super glue, super glue this right to the middle of the cone. Then we can flip the speaker over and screw it down to where it presses against the cone, but it's only got one screw in it, so it's still adjustable. And as you can hear, this is still gonna need quite a bit of tuning, but it's working, it's doing the thing. Now we can get an amp out and see what we can do with it. And I'm gonna like preface this by saying, don't judge it straight off. I've gotta get it tuned in and adjusted. And by the end, I get some pretty good sound out of it. But this, like all the videos that I make, pretty much is just a junky, one day throw together, janky experiment to make a proof of concept so that maybe you guys can take this and go further with it. And then I just record something with it the next day. So with that being said, let's see what it can do. You'll watch me in the process of getting it tuned in and figured out. I do have to say though, I was, I was really liking some of these sounds. Okay, so the way I have this set up, I have my reverb channel going to one channel in this keyboard amp and I have the guitar pickup going to the other channel in this keyboard amp because this is split. This to the amp, this to this little amp on board going to this speaker and to the reverb spring. So like, this would be only reverb. Okay, and it really is dependent on how you move this little speaker. Right now I have it kind of cut off to the side and the edge of that thing's against the spring. But if I move it over, you have much different reverb. school sound. So I can add, the, here's the regular pickup by itself. So we add this in to that. Check this out. Oh. 
but let's get about even. I can start getting some good sounds. because this amp has no distortion. This is like a little PA. It's a keyboard amp. And you can...
original uh, person, viewer that asked me to do this, he wanted to know if you could do this for surf, where you could like hit the guitar and get a drip. Well, you can hear that in here. If I had two springs and they would slap against each other, it would go right there because of that's how sensitive it is. Okay, let's go. All right. What a mess. <laughs> Well guys, that just about does it for this video. And uh, if you sat through all that, especially like the little jazz noodling at the end, you're my kind of people. It just didn't feel right to cut that all up. Anyway, like I said before, if you got any ideas for future videos, something you'd like to see, post it in the comments down below. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. I have the one hell of a catalog of future projects and videos that will be happening on this channel. I'm Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time.